So speaking of coming back from the dead... Welcome back to On the Dead. I mean, Branch. Uh, um, so yeah, we're still talking about uh, death in Star Trek Picard and yeah. how stupid and pointless hey, it is. Hey, does 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 Picard have a fake, real artificial heart now? What's the status of his artificial heart now that he has an entirely new body? Did so they make him a new if, robotic? If, if the android body has an artificial <laughs> yes. heart, I would assume it would have to because like they would have to pretend that he's the real. Yeah. Or did they lift the ban? On yeah. the well, again, they said they lifted the ban in the epilogue of the, the last episode. Yeah. Are you sure? Did you watch it? I think that was after the credits. There might have been after the credits stuff. Oh, no, I did not watch till after the credits. So if it was after the credits, then I did not see it. Okay. But no, I Maybe. don't think there's anything after the credits. Because, like, the CBS All Access thing, like, doesn't even show you all the credits. It, it minimizes the window and then kicks into the next episode. Oh, yeah. So it, it had to have been in the episode. Well, I haven't been credits. watching All Access. So. Uh, see, I, didn't, I, I don't know. I, maybe I just misunderstood or misheard. I did not get the impression that they were saying they lifted the band. I thought they were talking about, like, they were hoping the band gets lifted. And oh, then they could go back troop, to... Uh, maybe I was supposed to send those troop transports out there. I don't know. I don't know. Faster. Anyway, um, s- senseless deaths in Star Trek Picard. Uh, like we, we now have Picard died, and that death was meaningless because they had already established the mind transfer thing. So just like in Star Trek Into Darkness with Khan's magic blood, and then reminding us like two minutes before Kirk dies that the Tribbles that have Khan's magic blood came back to life so that you like remember that when Kirk is dying. <laughs> I hate when and, they do that. And then, you, and then you, you don't have to feel that there's going to be any consequences. Like they do the same thing yeah. with Picard where they remind you that that Dr. Soong has this mind transfer thing, which I'm assuming was either originally intended for Dr. Soong to be immortal or to transfer Data's consciousness from the little uh, Moriarty holographic simulator thing to uh, to an actual body. Um, I think I, some writers are just afraid if they're too clever, the audience won't follow them, so they don't even... Oh, we can have a whole episode. Yeah. But we're, we're not going to get into that right now, because we can. I'll spend a whole episode ranting about... Now that's stupid. Okay, sorry. Um, but yeah, but we had, we had, and we talked about one of these before, but we've had several senseless deaths in Star Trek Picard. We already talked about Icheb. Yeah. And I think we beat that dead horse. Uh, did we talk about we Hugh? We beat that dead, bo- that dead Borg. Did we talk about Hugh? Did we talk about Hugh? Yeah, we talked about how it was a little better, but still bad. Like, it, uh, it, it still I, didn't feel earned. I, I think I may have brought up the comparison between uh, Hugh's death and and the deaths of, of key characters in, for example, Game of Thrones. I may have touched on you d- that. I don't think you brought it... You might have brought it up here. So, Actually, I think you did. Yeah, vaguely. TV shows and movies as well nowadays have this uh, frustrating fascination with killing off popular characters for shock value. Yeah, because Game of Thrones it, did it. And I think it basically, yeah, basically comes down to because Game of Thrones did it and it worked in Game of Thrones. But there's a reason why it worked in Game of Thrones and why it doesn't work as effectively in a lot of things that are trying to ape off of Game of Thrones. And the reason for that is that, in, in, in especially with Ned Stark's death, so spoiler for Game of Thrones, if you haven't watched <laughs> the first season of Game of Thrones Game yet. Game of Thrones spoilers, red alert! Uh, Ned Stark dies in the last episode of the first season of Game of Thrones. <gasps> I did not know that, but I also don't care. <laughs> Oh, Game of Thrones... It, it, well, okay. No, 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 I don't care because, like, if it's in the first season, I, I can't get mad at someone spoiling yeah. me for anything that happened John, in that show, John, if you've not watched honestly. Game of Thrones, you should definitely watch at least, like, the first three The show was a cultural event. If I if I feel I shouldn't be mad about anything... No, but, like, like those spoiled. first three seasons, three, to three, four, and depending on who you ask, maybe five seasons are really good. Okay. Like, really good. Real uh, So, yeah, so they kill Ned Stark, who was the, the main character... Like, the protagonist, the point-of-view character, and the actor, Sean Bean, was, like, top billing in the credits. So, like, this is the character that everybody assumes is completely safe, right? And then the plot twist in the last episode is the crazy, stupid, bratty little king bitch kid has him executed because he has the gall to say that that that, uh, kid is not the legitimate king. Right. Go figure. Uh, so that's something that's that makes perfect sense oh, how long was that in that world. Before? If you challenge the legitimacy of the king's rule, that king's not going to be too happy about that. And uh, they're probably going to do whatever they can to shut you up, which is either going to be throwing you in the dungeon and locking away the key or chopping your head off. Or some better kings would make you their friend. 
I I mean maybe, but they'd probably have to have really good dirt on you. Yeah, and King Joffrey's not gonna make King, King Joffrey's not gonna win him so, over to his side. Yeah, right, right. But we'll, and, and we'll get to that because King jo Joffrey is like stupid and selfish and naive and short-sighted. Right, uh, but anyway, so the reason that Ned Stark's death is such good writing in Game of Thrones uh, is because it's important to the story of the show moving forward. It's not just something that happens and then there's shock value and characters are sad for a little, for a, uh, an episode or two and then everything moves on and nothing really changes. Like, Ned Stark's death is like the catalyst for the entire rest of the show happening. Actually, I'm going Like, it's the sort of thing that could have happened in the first episode as like the setup for the rest of the season. But it's, it happens at the end of the first season instead. So Ned Stark's death, like, basically sets up a war between the Starks and the Lannisters that makes up the bulk of the next two or three seasons. Uh, it creates the character motivation for Arya Stark for the entire rest of the season uh, series. Uh, it removes Ned Stark as a main character. Are, are you saying it moves the plot forward? It moves the plot. It removes Ned Stark as a main character and then elevates other characters into positions of, promi of uh, prominence, such as, uh, I think his name was Rob Stark, his son, who then has the war with the Lannisters, and then, like, Stannis Baratheon and other people like that, who then become prominent players because Ned Stark is now out of the picture. And, on top of that, it, uh, it is, like, one of the first bits of characterization for Joffrey that establishes Joffrey as a completely incompetent, egotistical, maniacal, naive, and short-sighted ruler whose rule is doomed to fail. Holy shit, our president really is Joffrey. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always heard the comparisons, yeah. but I never heard the character described with those words. I'm it's, like, oh, you just described the presidents. I think their hands are probably the same size, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, then we have like characters like Echep and Hugh, who are just killed in Star Trek. And again, this isn't just Picard. This is a lot of, a lot of TV shows and movies are doing this stuff. Where they're just killing off characters just for the hell of it, and I would say maybe maybe the next most successful one was possibly uh, in mm. uh, spoiler for the first Avengers movie. If you haven't seen that, Wait, did I just when, take a turn? Um, okay, Agent Coulson dies. Uh, you know that's something that you know is is one of the better ones, but it still doesn't do much to push the plot forward. Like, it's, it basically acts as, like, a bringing the team together kind of moment because they all knew him and they all liked him. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't go very far. But that's that's about the best that we can hope for for these, you know, shows and movies now. Is, you know, oh, like, you know, maybe it, it it's something that helps resolve the immediate problem. But it's not something that springboards into the entire rest of the series, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, what does the death of, for example, Hugh in Star Trek Picard accomplish? Does it, like, establish the threat of the main villain? Well, no, because it happens at the end of the series, and the main villain's threat has already been established, and she dies the next episode anyway. Yeah, she dies without, very soon. Without Picard ever seeing her again, uh, does it provide motivation for Seven of Nine? Uh, no. She's already got all her she's motivation. She's already motivated from Echep, and even Echep's death was senseless because it didn't provide her with motivation, because her and Egypt, Echep were established as already working against this lady yeah. who was tearing apart Borg and selling them for spare parts. Yeah, she they kind of they kind of gave us her story. Like, we didn't like her story, but they gave it to us. They told us what was going on in the world of Seven of Nine when they introduced right. her. But Echep's... Echep's death is still meaningless because it doesn't Absolutely. do anything to provide her with character motivation. All it is is just, oh, she's sad because her, <laughs> you know, her proxy son died. Yeah. But, like, it doesn't matter because, like, she was already doing the things that she was going to do anyway. I mean, maybe she wouldn't have killed that lady if she hadn't murdered Egypt, but, like, she's already going in that direction already, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, does, uh, does the death of Hugh, uh... Or no, well, well it, I was just asking, does it does it influence Seven of Nine? No, it doesn't, because we didn't even know at that point that Seven of Nine even knew who he was. And it's only retroactively in the next episode that she talks about how she did know Hugh, and she's sad that he's dead now. 
Uh, so again, it's it's a case of like Picard coming in later and trying to fix the thing that it screwed up in a previous episode by not properly explaining things. Um, does the death of Hugh set a tone for our show or or give us an idea of how this, this universe works? Uh, well, no, not really. And in fact, worse yet, it just cements the fact that this isn't the optimistic, idealistic future that we want Star Trek to be. It's a cold, cynical, vile world in which characters doing good things don't have good things happen to them. They get murdered indiscriminately. <laughs> I mean, that's our problem with this entire series from the get-go, is that that, that is the show. Is the show. The the Federation, somehow, it, it, they changed the tone to a... We're now in a world where everything is bad, including inside the Federation, when really they didn't need to do that. They just needed to make everything outside of the Federation bad. No, no, no. Or they could have shown they, us everything could, going bad in the Federation. They could have conflict within the Federation, but they need to explain that conflict, and that's what they don't do. And well, we talked earlier about yeah. how I said that they they could easily have included a instead of the Admiral just saying you're fucking hubris. All right, let's let's get to <laughs> let's get to my my like I've got like four things that relate to this that I need to bring up. All one, right. yes, there's only one time that I said, "Wow, now Picard is acting in character." And it's and you know it's when he said says I'm gonna make a heroic sacrifice I'm gonna show that well it's not I'm that he made a heroic sacrifice I'm gonna lead by example right. I'm gonna show these children how to act I am going to step up to the plate and that worked really well because there was a lot of like children in the show and it would have really capped it and bowed it up if it, if they had done thing, it a little better like, does he really though Terror because all he does is completed. he gets into a spaceship and he goes to fight a hopeless battle against the like if he had like. Of like actually really powerful ship, and he had the capability to destroy the Romulans, and he chooses not to. Well, that's what I'm saying. That would be setting a better example. Like they could have done better. Yeah, like all he does is he goes up and he talks to the Romulans. Look at all these ships. That's it. But yeah, anyway, you, can, you can keep, keep. Okay, so yeah, so one, I I did like the fact that he eventually is like, I'm gonna diplomat the shit out of this, and I was kind of hoping that the very next scene, I I was kind of hoping for something like this to happen the entire show, but just. The very like like just a sudden like fade and then another scene where they're like just all getting together in a meeting room to discuss the situation just like the antagonist and the protagonist like just all getting together and meeting as minds you know like star trek when people disagree they talk about it first they don't go straight to shooting each other to be fair though the romulans were convinced by soji powering down the beacon and they withdrew yeah. So the the central conflict did not have to be resolved by blowing up the bad. Guys. That is true. We did all. There was not a big fight, and I'm kind of glad there was not a big fight at the end. That there well, wasn't a big space there battle. There still was because they blew up all the silly flower things. That but but not between the Federation yeah, and the right. Ferengi. Um, Romulans. Or, Ferengi. Yeah, Federation of. Sorry, I that's literally a, that's was a very looking at the Ferengi Star Trek logo. Picard series that you're watching. I'm apparently. looking at Ferengi stuff. That that could have been an entertaining series. I hope I hope the Star Trek Worf series has Quark in it. We'll just say that. Uh, no, you, you reminded me of something earlier, too, that we were talking about off of the show. Ugh, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was related to the fact that we didn't have a big battle. What did you just say? Uh, you made a point just now. Five seconds ago. Uh, that the the Romulans were actually convinced by Soji's act of mercy to stand down. Oh, oh, no, I th I, I've lost it. I'll remember in the show, and I'll comment it if, if... Or when I watch it, and I'll comment it if I forget. Hmm. Um, what... Okay... So I, I, I liked I liked Picard in character. I didn't like so they had this new technical wonder device that I sort of liked because they oh, used it in Lord. a Star Trek way. I called it the supersonic screwdriver because you know my complaint about Doctor Who no, and how did, everything is solved with a magic a, MacGuffin. They did not okay. use it in a Star Trek way. Okay, so okay, <laughs> let me start. So one of the things I hate about fake sci-fi shows like Doctor Who is they're not really sci-fi because there's always a magic MacGuffin that solves everything no matter what. But hey, Doctor Who is more true to the spirit of the original Star Trek than this thing is because yeah. in Doctor Who, they solve all their problems by talking. Yeah. And so in this in this episode, I really I, I liked the thing, oh, here's this new magical piece of, you know, Clark tech, you know, indistinguishable magic. It's so advanced, it, it just fixes things. Oh, and it does other things. I, I didn't like the fact that the device existed. I liked what they did with it. I liked the fact that Picard hashed a plan, they made an analogy, that was very Star Trek. I liked that. And Except for the fact that the device was literally a magical MacGuffin. Yeah, that part I hated it, but how they used the magical MacGuffin was very Star Trek, and that's how how a Star Trek episode would have handled that. 
So, yeah, I hated the device. I liked how they used it in the narrative. If if some, like, executive said, hey, hey, we're, we're putting this thing in here because it, it makes the flow of the blah, but blah, blah. It, but you still have the problem of the entire central conflict of the show was solved by a magical MacGuffin that was introduced, like, 20 minutes well, before. Well, it wasn't really solved because all they did was delay the battle for 30 seconds, and that delay didn't have to happen for the narrative to work. So it didn't actually hurt Well, anything. they delayed multiple times. It just did delayed, nothing. They yes. delayed them with the flowers. Yeah. And then they... they they delayed them while they were waiting for the weapons. To I mean, there were ten, there were ten times where they were targeting and charging for thirty right. seconds. That it was just just fire some photon torpedoes already and like end the scene. But that's not what the point of the scene was, right? Uh, but uh, I, I will also say that to Star Trek Picard's credit, and you and I had this conversation just before we started recording, uh, uh, they actually are getting warp travel and distance yeah. a little bit better than I thought they, they would. They're saying times Be and those times are correct and they're yes. saying distances and speeds that right. are the but, jive. But, but Picard like makes a huge uh, a huge point about how they use that transwarp conduit and they traveled like I think he says 25 light years in 15 minutes. Yeah. Which doesn't sound like that long of a distance but. No it is. Like, that's that's um, that's like warp. That's a high warp nine. Yeah, that and, and then the and then gen. they make an explicit point Math. of okay because we traveled so fast we are days ahead of the Romulans yeah and we're hoping that the Federation fleet that we were supposed to rendezvous with but didn't and now we just hope that they know where to find us uh, might you know we're hoping they're not a day behind the Romulans okay you we had this discussion when you and I both oh by the way we we haven't mentioned on the show have we ever mentioned on the show how you and I met. We both worked uh, at Star Trek: I, The Experience. I, 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 we brought it up. I, I don't know, okay. terms, yeah. Maybe we have, but yeah, yeah. We've both been Trek nerds for for a long time. That's how we both got our jobs working at Star Trek: The Experience back in two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Uh, my, my, my first my first three jobs I actually got because I was a Trekkie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, okay, where was I going with that? Um, uh, we were talking about distance and warp speed. Oh yeah, yeah. Cause, cause there was, there's a, there's a Ferengi centric episode where they lose control of their speed and everyone gets mad. Like they should have been sailed through the entire earth system. And I, I remember going through and doing the math. And if you assume the star system of earth is at the heliopause, they were within seconds of correct in when they were quoting the speeds they were going. So I, I just wanted to like defend Trek has generally been good about distance and time. You're correct about that. Well, uh, except when it's not today, because there's <laughs> except for what it's not, because there's the exceptions of like Star Trek V where they travel to the yeah. center the, from the Romulan Klingon neutral zone from Earth to the Romulan Klingon Federation That's a good point. Zone. You're immediately going to find the example I'm wrong because to, you're a big Trek And man. then to the center of the galaxy which is like halfway to where Voyager is stranded in the Delta Quadrant. Oh, oh, I got I got to say one last thing while we're still talking about Picard. There was one thing that they did that uh, that like completely you were talking about how something will spoil that it's not real, a real consequence. You know, we're going to spoil death. We're going to spoil this and that. The fact that Riker took off and then Picard died 20 seconds later meant you knew he was going to come back because they weren't just going to like Yeah, there wasn't some kill him. farewell. Yeah, there was no farewell. It was like, well, I'll leave this to you. Right. If there were, if, yeah, I knew as soon as Picard started dying, oh, this this is not permanent. This is not permanent. Death. And, and yeah, that was... I mean, Picard did wanted to not make a big deal about it. So... Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I see where you're going with that, but I could also see, like, again, like... The like flow said, of the scene would have worked, been really weird if they hadn't done it that way. Well, no, but, but I'm saying, like, Picard explicitly said earlier in the episode that he didn't want to make a big deal about it. And he didn't want people to treat him like oh, he was Oh, about his, his, his thing. Oh, yeah, and so he's probably had so that discussion he, with Riker before, would yeah. Would he have... Yeah, and, and then there, I think he... The, like, there, there might have been a, a small exchange between him and Riker about how, like, this might be the last time we see each other. Like, I might never come this way again. Yeah, that's a fair point. When he yeah. was on, like... They the did just whole... already have a goodbye, too. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay, okay. Fine, we can call the topic dead. We can talk next time on The Branch about how you, not you at home, not you the gamer, you, Jason from MegaBearsFan.net, would remake this Well, show. if you want to talk about it, you can comment in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Please. <laughs> Give us your ideas. Okay. <laughs>